a lot of people say that it's actually your age group that is going to be the future of this country. As you know, we're really in competition with the rest of the world, and the whole basis of what we're trying to do is continue to innovate, to improve things, to make the world better. Well, the question is, how can we lead in all of these areas? Innovation or invention is really the basis for all of these new activities. And the question is, how can you be the way, be the innovator? Well, this is kind of the general idea of how a great idea happens. But unless you've already had one of these insights, I think you might be waiting a little while. The fact is there are really a few, two real areas of traditional invention. In the sciences, it's kind of reduction to basic principles in organic chemistry, DNA, build up some idea and investigate the basic principles. My friends at Stanford who are in basic sciences tell me that they have really good days and bad years. It takes a long time often to invent the things or understand the basic principles that they need to advance their field. It's, in the humanities and arts, it's much more like that light bulb going off in your head. People who have special talents and uh, apply themselves with those talents, uh, that is a different kind of invention. It usually takes uh, the, not only the talent, but commitment over lots of time, refinement, and the way we measure the success of that is the emotionality. When you look at a picture or a painting, what do you feel when you see that? But in recent years, there's been another area of uh, invention. <clears throat> and at uh, the Stanford Biodesign Program, we've adopted this design uh, thinking to try to improve healthcare, which is our area of interest. In design, the important thing is to understand uh, the real experience of the people who are living their lives. How do we improve the situation that they're in? How do we make things better for them? Not only for the patients, but for care caregivers, physicians, nurses, uh, people caring for the patients. There is actually a process that was, has been invented and understood, and it's a process that we teach our students over a period of 10 months. Then we have that's, those are graduate students. We bring 12 in at a time and spend the 10 months teaching in this. They, at the end, they end up with real products and real things that you can feel and use to actually t improve patient care. In addition, we have a class of 40 undergraduates who are taught this as well. And I'm going to briefly talk to you about what this process is. The process is... Uh, related to understanding really what happens. It's patient-centered in this case, but in, uh, it's a, applicable to things other than medicine, almost any field. You have some background. You understand that there's some area that you're interested in. And then you actually go and immerse yourself in the experience. You go live with the people, interact with the people who are having that experience. There, you're always looking for what we call <clears throat> unmet needs. That is, what could be done better? What's the problem? How could we improve things? And we look to specifically describe that need. Once we have a clear description and understanding the key pieces of that need, then we go into an area that we call brainstorming. Now, it sounds very cool. And in fact, it's very neat, because these are teams of three, four people at a time they actually brainstorm and work off each other sort of the way an improv group works on just leveraging one idea after the other. And from that, we then get to some decision as to what would be the way we'd like to proceed. And from that, we actually go further, as I'll explain in a moment, to find out what actually works. And then we end up with something that we can use. In our biodesign program, in a period of four weeks, we immerse our students in the clinic, in the emergency room, in whatever's appropriate. This year, it's actually uh, dealing with uh, problems of aging. So we're putting our, our students in nursing homes as well as in clinics and such. 
and they have to come up with at least 200 unmet needs. The idea of that is to actually look at every single thing and say, why do you do things this way? How could we do it better? What are the, why are things done the way they are? Once we have these needs, we define the area and we specifically try to describe the need in a very concise way. A better way to do such and such. A new way to do this. Now, when we've done that, we then teach practical filters to understand the most compelling needs. Now, it's not a question of what can you solve. It's a question of what is the most important thing to solve. If we were to solve this problem, would it have the biggest impact on this group of people or the biggest group of people or people who don't have any real solution to their problem at the moment? So those are filters having nothing to do with the solution. It's just what is the most important need? Then once we figure out what are the needs that attract us most and we think are really the most compelling, important ones, then we go into this phase of brainstorming, crazy ideas without criticism, inhibition to find solutions. Now, I say it this way because, in fact, that's exactly what we do. We go into a room that we call the brainstorming room. It has four walls with big whiteboards on it, and we start scribbling all the ideas that we can think of on the board. We go through kind of mapping what's going on in our minds and map that out, take pictures of it, think about it. The teams are in there with usually, these teams have, in our case, two physicians and two engineers, sometimes two physicians, uh, one physician, one engineer, two business people. They're people with different backgrounds. And that's part of the key that you'll find in uh, finding good solutions to any problem is having people with different backgrounds looking at these uh, issues and bringing their own unique ideas and backgrounds to the issue. Then we th actually are focusing on generating, lo generating lots of ideas and thinking about everything that could just be what we call blue sky, crazy, out of the blocks. You've heard all those terms, but they're real in this case. Now, once we've decided on all of these kinds of concepts, some of which are completely crazy, we actually have to try them. Now that could be with computer modeling of some things that we, d we have. Could be actually be building physical prototypes. We have what's called a collaboratory with lots of equipment and uh, um, we, ha we have Lego, we have all kinds of things that we can put things together and try to try things and try some concepts. And then from those, each concept that we think looks good, we can test it. Obviously, it's not going to be great at the beginning, so then we modify it, test it again, modify it. But in the design process, the key question is, what works? But at the end of this kind of process, you're guaranteed to end up with something that works. You have to decide how well it works, but in fact, it works. For the last five years of our 16-year program, the Indian government has sent uh, faculty over to us to us to teach them the, our process. And my point is that in India, their needs are really different than we have in the United States. This group from India decided that their issue was really a problem with uh, uh, traffic accidents and uh, broken limbs, broken legs, broken arms. The ambulance needs to pick people up and take them to hospital where they can get definitive treatment. Well, in this case, the um, they came up with a disposable splint. This is actually cardboard with some Velcro straps. In volume, in India, it can be, can be made for 25 cents. And so currently, in Delhi and other major cities, there are stacks of these in the ambulances, and it's become one of the startup companies in India on the basis of this product. Now they're going to work on some further ones, but as you can see, it really has to, it really has to do with the uh, specific need that they found uh, the key thing in this case was to find a better splint. Now this happy group <clears throat> is uh, a team following their patent on Zio, which they call from iRhythm. So in this case, there are two physicians and two engineers. They looked into the problem and said, now, this physician had patients coming to them who was, 
had been fainting. Now, a lot of cases, fainting is not very serious. It can be for lots of reasons. But the really important reasons for the cardiologist is sometimes the heart stops or it gets out of rhythm to such degree that it's not efficiently pumping and so you're not getting b blood to the head and that causes a faint. And of course, that can be extremely serious. And how do you find out about that? Well, you need to be find out what the heart's rhythm is. And what they de decided was to develop a way to record every heartbeat, the electrocardiogram, for up to a month. Because the engineers realized that now with miniaturization of batteries and electronics, they developed this thing which looks like sort of a big Band-Aid. This will record the heartbeat. Even if you take a shower, go swimming, whatever else, it's stuck to the chest, and it will record the, the, the heartbeat up to a month. If you have an episode, of course, you will be able to tell what was going on at the time. So this is one of 36 um, startup companies that have come out of the biodesign program. And it just gives an example of the specific um, issue that was uh, to be found in this case. So my point is, in 10 minutes, I can't tell you everything about a design thinking process. But it can be learned and applied to the needs that you find every day. So you can work on this in whatever field that you like. As a matter of fact, in the biodesign program, sometimes we give the students uh, an area to work on eye disease, sometimes heart disease, sometimes GI disease. It's agnostic to the field, and it's agnostic to the field of medicine as well. But the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Now, how can you do that? In fact, there are a lot of uh, URLs, websites from our design school at Stanford. And I encourage you to go practice. Go look at what they, they tell you to go through. And you'll get a much better idea of how you can uh, design something for the future, become an innovator yourself, and actually become a team member that can work on something that will advance your world and make things better. So um, I thank you for your attention, but I want you to go out and invent. Thank you. <laughs>